Today, we're going to find out if your vocabulary is at the basic level or if you've advanced beyond that. I'll present some words that are commonly known by people learning the language and your task will be to think of another word that could be used in its place. You'll see an image or a video, have a few seconds to come up with a word, and then I'll share the answer along with how it's typically used. This will be a fun little exercise to help you assess and improve your vocabulary. And remember to share your outcomes with me in the comments. One important note before we start, the alternative words might include slang and informal terms. Nevertheless, these are all widely used and often heard in everyday conversations among native speakers. And knowing these words shows you've reached a higher level in your language skills. All right, let's dive in without further delay. Right at this moment, you're looking at a picture on the screen. Can you identify what's shown? Exactly. Those are shoes, but there's another term that's equally common for shoes, and that is footwear. If you are familiar with this, great job. If not, no worries, you've learned something new today. The term footwear is often used in more formal, professional, or technical discussions. It encompasses the entire range of foot covering products, including shoes, boots, sandals, and more, making it broader and sometimes more appropriate for formal writing industry-specific language, and academic discussions. On the other hand, shoes is a more specific and casual term commonly used in everyday language to refer to a particular type of footwear. It's more direct and familiar to most people, making it a go-to word in casual conversations and settings. Let's imagine you're a health and fitness blogger and you're talking about the importance of choosing the right footwear for different types of exercise to maximize performance and minimize injuries. You could say something like, whether you're into running, weightlifting, or yoga, choosing the right footwear can significantly impact your exercise routine and prevent injuries. Okay, let's move on to our next video this time. This one depicts an action. So what is this lady doing? That's right, she's packing the groceries. But do you know another phrasal verb you could use instead of saying packing? Let's think. And the answer is to bag. Yeah, it's that simple. This is a bag and the action is to bag. Americans often use nouns as verbs. This is the most literal meaning which involves placing items into a bag such as groceries or purchases from a store. It has a couple of other meanings that we're not gonna dive into today so as not to confuse ourselves. Let's imagine you're in the grocery store standing at the checkout line with a cart full of items. As the cashier scans each item, you decide to speed up the process and you say, I'll bag the groceries as you scan them. Or a cashier could ask you, would you like me to bag these for you? Next up is this picture. Yes, you're right, this is equipment. And you already know what to do, think of another word for it. I'll give you a couple of seconds. And the word is gear. Equipment and gear can be used pretty interchangeably, especially when we're talking about the items you need for a certain activity or goal. Both words point to the tools, gadgets, and essentials used in various activities or sports. However, there are slight differences in their implications and how they are typically used. Equipment is a more general term that's applicable across a broad spectrum, from industrial and scientific settings to sports and photography. It suggests a collection of tools and devices designed for a specific purpose, often with an emphasis on their functionality. 
gear, on the other hand, is a term you'll hear more in contexts related to sports, outdoor adventures, and informal settings. It refers to the ensemble of items an individual might use for their activities, usually extending beyond just tools to include clothing and personal effects. While you might find equipment and gear being used as if they are synonymous, the choice between them might hinge on the contact's formality and the particular nature of the items in question. Now to the usage. Let's imagine you're planning a weekend camping trip with friends. Before heading out, you check your storage closet and you say, I need to go through my gear to make sure we have everything for camping. Now let's imagine you're joining a local soccer team and are getting ready for the first practice. And you tell to your roommate, I'm gonna stop by the sports store to pick up some gear. I am very excited to announce a brand new AI tool that Elsa Speak has just launched and which is made just for English learners. Elsa AI is a brand new feature of the Elsa Speak app which lets you create your own role play and practice English conversations on any topic you like. You can practice with four preset scenarios or you can create your own to mimic real life situations that come up in your own daily life. And what's even better is that Elsa will then give you an in-depth evaluation on how you performed after the conversation. So if you don't have the Elsa app already, you can click the link in the video description or pinned comment or you can scan this QR code you can see on the screen to download ELSA for free. And then if you want unlimited usage of ELSA AI, you can click the other link in the video description and pinned comment and get an amazing discount off of ELSA Premium that ELSA always gives to our viewers. Give it a try and let me know what you guys think. Hi, welcome to ELSA AI. Please select one of the following role plays. Okay, so we have chat with a friend, shopping at the mall, ask for directions, job interview, or my own scenario, or surprise me. Let's go with my own scenario. Great. What kind of scenario would you like to role play? Can you give me some details about it? Okay, we'll press tab to speak and tell her what kind of scenario we want. Let's make a scenario about ordering coffee in a coffee shop. Hi there, what can I get for you today? Okay, so here you have to improvise and just speak. Good morning, can I get a latte with dairy-free milk? Of course, we have a few different dairy-free milk options available. Which one would you like in your latte? What kind of options do you have? We offer almond milk, soy milk, and oat milk as dairy-free options. What would you prefer in your latte? Do you happen to have coconut milk? I'm sorry, but we don't have coconut milk as one of our dairy-free options. Would you like to try one of the other options instead? It's really realistic. <laughs> I've been in this situation multiple times. Sure, let's go with unsweetened soy milk. Great. One unsweetened soy milk latte coming up. Would you like any flavor shots or sweeteners added to your latte? No, nothing. Thank you. All right. One unsweetened soy milk latte. No flavor shots or sweeteners. A few <laughs> moments later. Great job. How did you feel during the role-playing activity? Was there anything that you found challenging or anything that you particularly enjoyed? Well, I enjoyed that I didn't uh, have to pay money for my latte. Haha, <laughs> yes, that's definitely a perk of a role-playing activity. Okay, well that was really, really cool. I loved it. You guys should definitely try it. Shall we proceed? Take a moment to take a look at this picture. This would be called an outfit. An outfit is a set of clothes worn together. You might often hear it from influencers saying, this is my outfit of the day, or someone might say, I love your outfit. Now let's think of an alternative word for it. And the word is get up. And yes, it's one word and it's informal. Get up and outfit can often be used interchangeably as both refer to a set of clothing worn at one time. 
However, the context and connotation can differ slightly between the two. Outfit is a more neutral term that simply refers to a set of clothes someone wears. It can be used in a wide range of contexts from everyday wear to special occasions without implying anything unusual or distinctive about the clothing. Get up, on the other hand, often carries a connotation of the outfit being notable, distinctive, or chosen for a specific purpose or effect. It might be used to emphasize the style or uniqueness of the clothing. While they can be used similarly, get up might suggest a bit more character or flair in the clothing choice compared to outfit. You could use this word to talk about someone's Halloween costume, for example. When I walked into the Halloween party, I immediately noticed Jake's get up. Everyone was impressed by the effort he put into his costume. Or you could describe your job interview outfit to your friend. For my job interview at the design firm, I chose a professional yet stylish getup. Or when talking to your friend about your first date. I was so nervous about our first date that I must have changed my getup three times. All right, and our last picture for today is this one. If you thought that this was a bag, you are absolutely right. However, this is a fake Louis Vuitton bag. And we call products like these dupes. Great job, you're absolutely right. But there is another more informal way to say dupe. Let's take a couple of seconds to think of this other word. So, do you know what it is? If you don't, that's okay, I'll tell you. It's knockoff. A knockoff is a copy of a popular expensive product sold for a much lower price. Unlike the original product, a knockoff is usually made with cheaper materials and might not be as good in quality. Now let's use it in a couple of sentences. I saw a knockoff of the designer bag you love at the market downtown. It looks pretty close to the real thing, but it's only 50 bucks. Be careful when you buy electronics online. I accidentally bought a knockoff smartphone once it looked just like the brand model, but it was much slower and started having problems after a few weeks. My cousin bought a knockoff Rolex on his vacation and from a distance, it's hard to tell it's not real, but up close, you can see the differences in craftsmanship and detail. And that wraps up our vocabulary challenge for today. I hope you found it enlightening and fun. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content like this. Did any of the alternative words surprise you or did you know all of them? Please share your results with us in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you did. Plus, if you found this video helpful, why not share it with a friend who loves learning new words as much as you do? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!